A man missing now nearly seven years. Some say it was suicide, but his body has never been found. Investigators are now re-examining the case. In tonight's Unsolved Georgia, the case of Brandon Helms, a family torn apart, loved ones still searching for answers. It is in the most mundane moments at work. But I've got a lot of time to think. That Todd Helms thinks about his little brother most. It drives you crazy, then it makes you angry, then it makes you depressed. It's been more than six and a half years since anyone has seen or heard from Brandon. I miss hearing his voice. He just don't leave. This is when he was a baby, he was a happy baby. Brandon Helms was born and raised in the small Georgia town of Cordell, a charming place rooted in Southern values. Brandon was a loving, kind, you know, sweet little baby. He was a hard worker when he got older, loved his family. He grew up along this stretch of country road on land that's been in his family for generations and spent countless hours fishing here at the family pond. He always would take his girls fishing when he came. His first job at 16 was in the print room of the local newspaper just across town, a paycheck that quickly became a passion. He loved it. He ate it. He slept it. A place where he met his best friend, Monty Kilcrease, and which eventually led him to Misty. When he found Misty, he thought he'd found the world, you know. Brandon and Misty were married in summer of 2003, the couple welcoming two little girls over the years. This is Ansley and this is Caitlin. The apples of their father's eye. Their daddy loved them. I'm telling you, loved them. Brandon eventually moved his family to Thomasville, but when he was laid off at his newspaper job, his brother says he fell into a deep depression and started to drink. It was like a sinkhole. And once he got in it, it just kept sucking him in and sucking him in and sucking him in. Eventually, he and Misty separated. She said she was just tired of it. And Brandon moved here to his best friend's home in Lanier County, about an hour outside Thomasville. On tonight's Most Wanted, the search continues for a missing Lanier County man who vanished over a year ago. It was a rainy Monday afternoon, about 10 days before Christmas in 2015, when the sheriff's office was summoned to the house off Teeterville Highway. About 11.15, I got a call was what was in his wife. He's like, we can't find him, he won't answer the phone. The 42-year-old was gone after sending a disturbing text message to his estranged wife. She said, Brandon, we'll see you Christmas morning. And then he said, no, you won't, I won't be here. Kind of alarming to us is the fact he did not take his vehicle. He did not take his personal belongings with him. Chief Deputy Stride Jones, who recently took over the case, says deputies immediately noticed Brandon's red pickup truck parked in the driveway, still had half a tank of gas. His coat, cigarettes, and cell phone all left behind. If somebody's intending to leave, there's certain items that they usually carry with them, and then Brandon didn't carry those items with him. Search and rescue dogs were called out almost immediately, but found nothing. And today, Brandon's parents will never forget. They had the tracking dogs right there. They found no place on that property where he stepped off of it. While the home was visually inspected, it wasn't searched that day. In fact, investigators say it would take about three years before that was done. Too many unanswered questions from the start of this thing. It wasn't until a year had passed after a candlelight vigil was held outside Brandon's church that the investigation took a different turn. Maybe we can get some leads and help this family to get closure. It had been an entire year with no sign of Brandon, no phone calls, sightings, or movement on his bank account. Concern built into maybe Brandon didn't just walk away and leave. Investigator Billy Joe Slaughter, who now works for a neighboring sheriff's office, was back then with Lanier County. In 2017, she took over the case and started back at the beginning, at the home Brandon was last seen. I'm not sure at this point that we can disclose exactly what was found in the search, but there were some things of concern. She says several samples were collected and sent out to the GBI crime lab. It's been four years and they are still waiting on those results. It is a slow process. Investigator Slaughter also had the surrounding farmland, forest, and old wells searched with cadaver dogs, and a dive team was brought in to scan nearby ponds without success. We have 
literally searched everywhere you could search around Brandon's last location and haven't been able to find him. The man who owns most of the surrounding property gave us a look around. He says it's methodically burned every few months. Surely Brandon's body would have been found if he were here. Nearly seven years later and not a clue. Brandon's family can't help but wonder. For Brandon to up and disappear without any type of coat, sweater, jacket. On that cold. On that cold, cold dreary, rainy, rainy day. Mm -hmm. No. If Brandon had hurt himself, where is he and why hasn't he been found? Well, if you commit suicide, you can't bury yourself when you drop dead. I, I just can't see that. Mm -hmm. Besides, they say he loved his girls too much to hurt them even told his dad as much. Well, he said, I wouldn't do that and leave my daughters. Misty tends to disagree. She didn't respond to our attempts to contact her, but dozens of court documents we pulled from the Thomas County Courthouse tell us what she believes may have happened. In her filing to have him declared dead, Misty told the court she believes he committed suicide, pointing to his depression, alcohol abuse, and several negative texts, including this one. Misty had Brandon declared dead once Georgia law allowed. That's something that went against his family's wishes. We don't want Brandon declared dead because we want to find out what's happened. Brandon's best friend and roommate Monty was the last person to see him. Investigator Slaughter says Monty told them he and Brandon had been shooting guns together and began arguing the day before he disappeared. There were some disagreements and arguments between them on Sunday. Monty also declined to be interviewed, and investigators say he told them Brandon went to sleep and was still there in the morning when he left for work. Now, the sheriff's office is quick to point out he's been cooperative, and Brandon's family says Monty filed the initial missing person report and even spearheaded a search the day after Brandon disappeared. At this point, the Lanier County Sheriff's Office says they can't be sure what happened. We can't rule anybody in or out at this point because we just simply do not know. And Brandon's family is left with so many unanswered questions. Here we are, right now, not knowing anything any more than what we did on the first day. The relationship between Misty and Brandon's family has since soured. I haven't had any contact with Misty in three years. I miss the giggling and the laughter of my granddaughters. But they are still holding on to hope. Just about every day I look out that window and I say, he's gonna walk around that corner that something, somehow, will bring Brandon home. The Lanier County Sheriff's Office is describing this as a reactivation of the case, and they say they are hoping new technology could help make a breakthrough with some of the forensic evidence that they've collected. They're also hoping maybe someone in the public would come forward with some information they might know anyone who might have information is asked to call the sheriff's office at 229-482-3545. Again, that is 229-482-3545. We'll be right back.